Yes, my people, good day. How you doing today? Hope you're doing great. We're working on an E46 M3 and we will be removing the water pump. We're doing a water pump jump on this. It is leaking. So it's time to get in there and swap this thing out. You will see some obstacles I have to overcome. Some solutions to some problems for specialty tools and all that type of stuff. So we're going to work through this together and get it done. So what I'm doing here is removing this shroud and there are plastic clips and rivets that are holding it into place and they are small and they have not been removed in a long time. So some of them are petrified or the heads of some of them have been removed before and are damaged. So it's a little bit tricky. So you have to be a little bit patient using a clip puller tool, but you can get it out. So that's one piece, the passenger side piece. So it looked like there, just a wind deflector. Help to direct the ear to where it's going. You definitely will need more than one form of shop light when working on this. I have my headlight on, plus I have the one that's handheld so I can see stuff. Sometimes you're fighting with stuff and the reason you're fighting with it, believe it or not, is because it is not illuminated enough for you to be able to see what is actually snagging. So if you get a good light, it can alleviate a lot of stress sometimes, believe me. So working on the one that is on the side of the driver's side, the radiator hose passes through it. So I have to get out my pick tool. I remove the screw clamp from the radiator hose and I'm just working the pick tool between the radiator hose and the flange to get it kind of loose. So I can get the radiator hose off. And then after that now, I am going to unclip the upper radiator hose from the radiator itself. Everything is plastic. So be gentle. Don't stress it too much. You see that little coolant bypass line right there? That thing is just petrified looking at it. It ended up snapping at the end of everything and I had to replace it. I would replace it anyway because why are we going to go in there new and then leave something that's like partially petrified you know you're setting yourself up for failure on that one so i carefully put it to the side and here i am now using the clip tool just pulling the clips on this shroud on the driver's side so we have to remove that too so you have a shroud on the driver's side shroud on the passenger side and then now you have the center shroud man let me tell you this is a lot of shrouding let me tell you <laughs> in comparison to what i've worked on before the M3 really shrouded up. So this is what it looked like. So you're coming out here. You'll see the hole in the top where the radiator hose passed through it. Tying it into it. What? They had to do what they had to do. And I'm like, all right, it is what it is. Just another design. So got with light in there now. So setting up the game plan now for removing the fan clutch. Because you can't remove this other fan shroud with the fan in place they have to come up and out together so to remove the fan clutch you're going to need a specialty tool so this tool here you see me have it's the holder so that holder um attaches not really attaches but it snags on or hooks on to the heads of the bolt that holds the water pump pulley to the water pump flange so the heads of the bolts will be sticking up it for them. So you see the tool has like a little hook and then a little arm. So you hook it to it and you can hold it steady. And then this now, you see the extension on my air hammer is what I'll use. So this is a pneumatic fan clutch removal tool. Some people I know use like a hammer and a chisel and it works. <laughs> it works. Okay. It works, but it is not my preferred choice of working so i have the holder in place this is a tricky scenario okay it's not going to be perfectly balanced and solid if this is the first thing you do it 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 it's a little balance act a balancing act so i have the holder in place and then i also have the attachment for what i'm going to hook the impact in the arm so you see this is how it's set up so i hold it and it is slipping off and you have to hold it and reposition yourself to hold it and then when you got it then you pull the trigger and you get up and it breaks it loose now one key important point remember that this thing is a left hand thread so you are going to be impacting on it in the way as if you are tightening it if you understand what i mean let me let me rephrase that 
we are used to righty tidy lefty loosey okay but when it's left hand thread it's lefty tighty righty loosey <laughs> you understand so that's what's going on with it so i was impacting on it and it was not breaking free so that's the new water pump now and i am looking at the threads itself just reading the thread just to confirm if it is left hand thread or right hand thread and when you look at the thread you can see where the thread starts and you can track the thread going up the part so if it is right hand thread when you look at it you will see it spiraling to the right and if it is left hand thread you'll see it spiraling to the left so when i was breaking it loose it would not come loose and i don't want to risk tightening this thing up any further when it should be going in the opposite direction so i just reach for the new part just look on it just to confirm that i am going in the right direction and i did confirm that i am going in the correct direction it was just that that bolt was super tight the fan clutch was super tight onto the water pump so i was like all right i need to keep going but at this point here i had to draw for another tool a newer tool because i think that maybe the old tool that i had that had broken and i had um welded it i think that maybe the weld was causing it not to give it the full pressure that it should but i wasn't sure so i just went for another tool because it was not working so you see me have the another tool there i took that part off and here's the new tool now looking all professional and fresh again i put the wrench part down on the fan clutch and i am positioning myself see i have it there then now the holder is necessary because you use a holder to keep it steady in place and now i'm positioning everything up as i say it's a little dance so the the you have the the wrench part which is trying to fall off the nut on the back of the fan clutch there's not much room back there to be working so what happened is when you're trying to fit all this stuff in there, the wrench part is trying to fall off. You have the attachment that goes with it. Then you have the holder. It, it takes a little bit of skill to get everything lined up perfect. And then so you can just pull the trigger and go and break this thing loose. But when it all lines up properly, when the stars align, it comes loose and you can move forward to me it is way better than reaching for a hammer and a chisel and just to be hammering on stuff because it that it, to me that is just too much hit and miss this one was quite a challenge in my experience using this tool and this type setup it's usually the first time or maybe the second time and it's broken loose but hey it's a bmw it's a euro so you know it gives you a little bit of, um gives you a little bit of a fight but i got it i got it so it's broken loose now and usually when it breaks loose, it flies off and falls under the car. So <laughs> you usually have to go in there and pick it back up. And then hopefully it does not fall into the drain bucket full of coolant. You understand? So you have to dry it out. But just, just one of them things. So now it is time to get ready to remove the fan shroud at the same time with the clutch fan. So before I can remove the fan shroud, I'm just looking to see what else might be holding it in place. And I see this, um, the, the plug for the um, electric fan is in there because it has an electric fan too as well. So the plug for the fan is attached to the fan shroud. You can see it there. And I am just unclipping it from the fan shroud. And then also there is like a little connector box that's right there. I unplug that as well. So that we'll be able to get the fan shroud up out of there. Remember what I said now, working on these vehicles and any vehicle, your light is one of the most important things. If you have not worked on many of these to know where all the fasteners are, you need a good light to be able to see because these, these fasteners are so small and they're usually hidden like under a little ledge. So you're trying to get stuff out. You're wondering what's holding it. If you have a good light, you can see all that you need to. So on this side, it has torques. So I saw the torques using my light. I was like, all right. So if there's one on one side, there's chances are there's one on the other side. Always remember that. They tried to keep everything paired up. So I removed that one. Now I'm removing this one on the driver's side. So they have one down low. And they have one on the side as well, pinched between the earbox. So I guess I would have to remove the earbox. But... I'm going to try to find a way to get around doing that. And this little Milwaukee quarter inch 
ratchet here let me tell you i can't say enough about that tool it is it is powerful it it, it has a nice reach to it and it just it has a small head so you can get it in between places and it works it comes through for me so many times i can't talk enough about it you know granted new people starting out in the field i am never really talking up any power tools or anything because i think you should spend your first money on your your basic sockets and ratchets and wrenches and stuff but let me tell you this little milwaukee here it it, it comes through many times so i am reaching for that bolt not really bolt but that torx that's holding the fan shroud that's on that side the bmw wants you to remove that air box to be able to get to that you know how much work it is to remove that air i'm not removing that no we, we're not doing it so i use them milwaukee and i put it down there and i set it and i get it onto the head of the torx and i just press the trigger boy let me tell you that thing just came right out of there i was like whoa that is easily 20 30 minutes worth of work right there just got saved just using that it was so tight in there i wasn't sure if i'm gonna be able to get it back in i did get it back in but it was really super tight getting it out of there you see how much work it took just to remove it from there but i got it so i got it out of there i was like all right so now the fan showed look like something so with bmw now they have the the torx hole in it right and then they also clip it into place as well right this thing is well put together i must say so working on these vehicles you can't rush you have to just sit back relax and just remove what needs to be removed it, it is not it is not it it, it 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 is not thrown together it is assembled thoughtfully <laughs> let's put it that way it's that they assembled thoughtfully so I am now looking again, looking again. What else could be holding me? What else could be holding me? Yep. And sure enough, there are two more torques on the lower part of the fan shroud. So I got out my Milwaukee again and I just went to work and did them two torques that were under there. One on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. You see me laying there on my, we call this a reggae bed or we call it a lie down board. <laughs> cardboard is super trusty in the shop. So many uses cardboard has. It does let me tell you. It is indispensable. So, young guys starting out, you get a nice piece of cardboard. Don't throw it away. Lean it up in the corner. It comes in handy for many uses. This is just one of them. And as we go along, I'll show you some other uses as well. So, now all the fasteners are gone. This is the fan shroud. See, I got out the fan because you have to pull the fan shroud up to be able to get the fan out. And then there goes the fan shroud. Simple as that. <laughs> See how much work that takes just to remove the fan and fan shroud. Yo, that's easily an hour or something. And this is what it looked like in there now. Ladies and plenty men, welcome to my office. This is where we will be working. Just take a look around see how much room we have to work with here we don't really need much more room than this a little bit more would be nice but you're not really going to get more than this so see the belt and the idler pulleys chances are one of those idler pulleys are bad they're always bad this is the water pump pulley flange the fan clutch was threaded to that right there that's the crank pulley belt ac compressor over there yes so we're going to be getting busy here in a second again the light very important have to have your light i'm trying to wiggle this thing for you so you can get a better view of what's going on but it the belt is on so it's keeping the pressure on it so i remove that dust cap that is um concealing this is a eight millimeter allen and when i remove the dust cap i'm now able to get access to the allen bolt that is in the belt tensioner and i use my ratchet and then i'm going to push down on it and that is going to relieve the tension from the belt. And then I am able to remove the belt. Then I will be able to show you how much movement and how much play is in that water pump pulley when this person was driving around town. You understand? So that is how you get the belt off. You use the 8 millimeter Allen. You pop the cap off. You set it in there. You pull on it. It loosens it up. And you take it off. Make sure to draw yourself a little diagram or something when you take the belt off because you are going to forget how it goes back on. Even though you're looking at it now, you promise yourself that you're going to remember. Your, your, yourself is tricking you. So 
make sure you draw a little diagram. So, you see it? Look at that. Man, boy, let me tell you, that thing been done. Been done. So, it's leaking. It's, it's wobbling. It's making noise. Now, if you leave this, doing this for long enough, it will eventually just come off. The whole thing will come off and then now it will send your fan straight into the radiator. So you would need a new radiator plus you will need a new water pump and a new belt and chances are maybe a pulley or two. So it is a good idea when you start seeing the signs, you go ahead and replace it. Removing the water pump pulley from the water pump, these 10 millimeter bolts, it's four of them. I use my screwdriver and I just wedge it between one. And then I just break it loose. I'd broken them loose. I wasn't recording. So I'm just showing you the procedure of how I break them loose. So that's how I get them off, right? The screwdriver, put it between there, quarter inch ratchet, 10 millimeter deep, and it breaks it loose. You see how much movement? All right. So these are the new water pumps. So one of the things that we do now is when you're putting on the new water pump, if you're not familiar with it, you look and see what is attached to the water pump. So we know we have one. We have one bolt, two bolt, three bolt, four bolt, five bolts, just five bolts there. Then we have three in the top. So the three in the top here, we see them as right here. One, two, and three. And then the five now go kind of tricky. So make sure say you have your mirror handy. <laughs> so we have the mirror right here at hand. So I can see where I'm at, which ones I'm getting onto. And then I can also see that pipe that is attached there. Look like it's a little bracket. I have never done one of these before. So I have all the confidence in the world. So see it there. Boom, bam. So let's go. Um, <clears throat> I like removing the bolts. Bolting and then I'll take this off. Last. 10 millimeter. More than likely is a 10 millimeter. Well, I tell you, 10 millimeter in from us. This one. Uh, we have one, two. Crack them loose. One, two. We have, what we say we have? What we say we have? So I have these two. I have these two so far. So we have a one far back, next one far back, and then one right under the middle. <coughs> okay, one far back here. Crack them loose first. Mm -hmm. That's see if I'm a my, my, my battery power. Mm hmm. And then one under the, the lower part, the base. All right, one under a few feet. Okay, I'm on it. So because that one kind of difficult to see and get to, since I'm on it, I leave it on it. And then I'll just put my uh, my driver. Every couple seconds you save, adds up at the end of the day. Stay right with it. I remember working on a 5 series I think and this lower bolt was behind the crank pulley so we had to take the crank pulley off that sucked it came off still no but it's unnecessary all right we don't want to drop that bolt I don't know where it would go and I don't want to find out so we'll be careful with it all right, <clears throat> so that was the most difficult one. I removed first. Don't like getting dirty. Don't like my tools getting dirty. Crazy, right? Yeah. All right. Two down, three to go. Um, Okay, another far one. What's oh, going on? Uh -huh. They all look to be the same length so far, so that's good. Except this one. This one is a different length. So that one goes there. Yo, that don't even go in much. You see that? That barely go in. Wow, that's crazy. I leave that one in there because I don't want to mix it up. <coughs> Hold on, other one there? Let me see if that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is that one. Look short. Uh 
Alright, so the two top ones are longer. Two top ones are longer. And it's not even much they protrude, you see that? Not even much. <coughs> okay. And then now we have the three in the top. Break those ones, crack those ones loose. And then see what kind of resistance. Put it up a resistance now. I'm gonna get it out. You know I'm Alright. There's a pipe right there. Okay, cool. Let's see what BMW wants us to do with this thing here. Vice up. Alright. This whole bracket. Yo, they actually pick the engine up with these three 10 millimeter bolts. That's crazy. Yeah, this is the engine bracket with, the, with these bolts. You see that? So when people talking about torque this and torque that and whatever, this is what picks the engine up. Just remember that. <coughs> All right. All right. Huh. Blows us good. That thing make on. That thing is made on there. Wow. Wow. That thing is made on there. Wow. If you're using RTV, the RTV probably aren't pretty good. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Hopefully we have a drain bucket at the ready. Okay. So there we go. So now one little trick. I don't know if this one will happen. Sometimes these pipes that are in here are attached to a pipe on the other end of the engine. And if you just pull it out, you will pull it from that one in the back. And you can't get it back in without removing the intake. So I don't know if it's, this is the case on that, but we don't want to do that. So let me look. See how far back this pipe go. Okay, it's just right here. It's just right here. So nothing to nothing to fear. All right, I bet you when I pull it out, the tube is attached to this and doesn't stay attached to the other piece. I bet you watch. Yeah. Told you. All right. Okay, what is that? Oh, the thermostat is under here. All right. Let me get this hose off. I hate, I hate when the holes get in the way. Put it up a resistance now. Yo, that thing is smaller than a seven. Smaller than. What's this? This is a five and a half. No, I don't think it went that small though. Probably a six. Yep, six. Yep, loose. Then we have a trusty hook pliers. These hoses don't even feel supple. You know, they're kind of old. I'll tell it to them, them feel old, you know, thin and papery. Still got coolant to leak. Come on, man. You can never get the drain bucket in the right spot. Never. Drain bucket never in the right spot, boy. Right, uh, the shop floor is a drain bucket. All right. All right. All right. Okay, we got that off. Okay, okay. Oh. Minimize the mess as best as possible. All right, this should cooperate somewhat now. Should, keyword, should. And it's not. Okay. All right. So obviously, this pipe that is hindering me here, 
should be um remove this tpms out the way this pipe should stay hmm but it didn't so i'm gonna go on the back of this lip boy yo the i man let me tell you. There is no way that pipe make on there. That pipe have to be removable. Yep, sure is. That thing RTV up something serious. <clears throat> Man. Mm. That thing is in there. That's a tight situation. Wow. Thermostat sticking. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can get the thermostat up out the base of it. And then now it should just, yeah, because I'm trying to get it up and above. Let's see if we can get it up out. That might be the trick right there. Let me tell you, being a technician life not easy. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Something just not feeling right there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The mirror to the rescue to the on screen. Wow. Wow. But voila. The whole water pump needs to come off together. We're not leaving the water pump on there. What am I doing? Let me see. We're not leave all right so we're not gonna go too crazy with the prying okay we're just gonna put a little pressure on it Woo, boy here we go i'm telling you how rtv is rtv works let me tell you all right so the only other thing now is this pipe that is in the side of it i'm tracing it to see where it go Okay. Okay. The pipe that fits into here is a hard metal pipe and it goes and it circles around the side of the engine to the exhaust manifold and it's rigid. So you're not going to be able to tweak that too easy. Wait a Just one little bolt and this thing broke loose. There we go. See what that looked like there? Boom. That's the top. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Woo! Boy, let me tell you. Dirty. Everything greasy and oily. Yeah. Somebody RTV everything with this thing, boy. Man. Uh. 
and this is what it looked like you can see how dirty it is in here this environment gets dirty valve cover gasket leaking oil filter housing probably leaking a little bit but we're going to clean everything up nothing to fear and as you can hear i have my trusty sidekick with me and he will enable me to get lots of work done you understand so i'm using the razor just to get the surface clean all the glass kit material and all of that then i use my pick to remove all of the o-rings <laughs> yeah let me tell you it <laughs> never a dull moment um when you're doing this service make sure that you get all the o-rings there's a pipe there in the back and i think there are two or three more o-rings just make sure you order all the o-rings that's necessary don't reuse any make sure that everything is fresh the last person who was in here I don't know if they use reuse the old O-rings and just trust it in the RTV. It didn't leak, but man, it made the removal super difficult. So you may have that to deal with when you are working on one yourself. So that's the new O-ring. I put it on there, cleaned it up first and put it on there. And then there are a couple more O-rings for up the top by the thermostat housing. There's an O-ring on this hard pipe. Remember, I had to go around the corner and undo that hard pipe to get it out of the side of the water pump so we have that one as well so i use the pick yeah after removing the old o-ring get yourself a rag nice big rag and just wipe everything clean wipe off the grease wipe off the old rtv you don't want to install the new o-ring with any kind of you know contaminants or any kind of debris under there which could lead to a leak so i'm just wiping everything off as best as possible especially the old rtv because that stuff is kind of hard and just put on install the new o-ring but when i remove and replace these o-rings before i install the new water pump part i too use a little bit of rtv not as much as this no this is trigger warning some people are triggered by this because they say that there is no need for you to be using rtv because the o-rings are new i hear what you say i understand what you say but this is what i like using it's called renzo sil and it's like a european style rtv and it works great and i just put a little a little film on the o-rings just a little film and then i also put a little film on the gasket material too sometimes when i'm putting it together it is just extra insurance i'm not baking it on this thing should not leak but on a 20 year old car hey anything possible moving up to that upper coolant flange there definitely going to clean this one up remember that thing was rtv in there solid so there is like chunks of rtv still in there i am i'm using my little pick but i am not scoring the surface i'm just running it on the edge to kind of cut it off this is the the um the original flange with the old thermostat in there this is what they look like see that's a thermostat <laughs> that's a big old thermostat that's reminiscent of the thermostat on a detroit 60 series uses like two of them <laughs> trust me i wonder if it's the same one so bmw has a very stout thermostat for this vehicle here it looks like you can't change the thermostat without taking the water pump off that's how it seems to me but that's the housing so we're going to clean up the housing too there are so many moving pieces on this service right here so many areas yeah. to clean up so many o-rings see that little pipe that pipe has two o-rings on it plus we just installed two o-rings then there'll be an o-ring on top of that to seal that housing mm -hmm. to the water pump inside man that's way too many o-rings that's what i think but yeah it is what it is it's just the design just be aware that they're there and okay. clean the surface up and yeah. replace the o-rings yeah. using my razor definitely definitely um i could use a whiz wheel here and a zing 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 zing, zing and all that kind of yeah. stuff but i like using the razor it takes a little bit longer but uh, it's just preference it's just preference so here go the o-rings here all of my um factory bmw o-rings and a factory bmw thermostat by mahle i don't know how to pronounce that see that piece right there see that rtv in there is it 
more o-rings o-ring city so i'm going to clean that up replace those two o-rings then i'm going to clean up the housing too as well put on a thin film okay. of rtv and do that as well but as i said i have my trusty sidekick there and he is assisting with some of the work so this should get the work done real real quick you understand This is the new thermostat we'll be installing. See how pretty it is. See how nice it is. That's a stout thermostat. So it fits right in there like so. And it works like so. This is the pipe that was in the back. And I just use this rag to kind of start cleaning it up. Clean off that old RTV that's off of there. Because we're going to replace those two O-rings. Trigger warning, trigger warning. As I said, trigger warning. I put a thin film of RTV on these new O-rings. They should not leak, but if they do leak, then what? It's not us going back in there a second time. It's just me. So I put a thin film on there. This is the big O-ring for the top, for the thermostat housing. See, I put a thin film on the top part of the housing right there. This is the way I do it. Then I set it on here. Now, in uh, hindsight, it seems as if, not seems as if, yeah. but to get the thermostat off, we have to get the water pump off because there's just no room to be able to maneuver it out of there. In my experience, maybe a pro might be able to say, oh, you just do this, do that. But you saw the difficulty that I experienced trying to remove it. So I am just assembling everything together now. So the water pump in hand, thermostats in place in the thermostat housing, putting them three bolts in the top right there, getting it ready. I'm going to attempt to install all of this as a unit if i can just get some help from my partner right there that you hear <laughs> so this is the step one that i'm doing i think it's best to get this pipe in there that solid pipe in there i got it all the way back in place so now when i'm putting the water pump assembly down in there all i have to do is just line that up and once i get that and in all i have to do now is just line up the bolt holes for the water pump that rigid pipe that is on the passenger side that is kind of not to use the term flexible but i am able to maneuver it around a lot so i'm not too worried about that you hear how nice that thing does snapped into place right there yep i am making progress now i am cooking with grease now i am looking like i am getting something done now I'm feeling real positive at this point right here because the hardest part has been achieved. I was able to remove the part, clean everything up, and now I'm assembly, doing the reassembly. But now, one thing you must always remember is don't get too excited when you get to this point right here because something can still go wrong right up to the last second. In backing out of here, you can create some kind of drama some kind of damage so just be vigilant be mindful be watchful be careful because there's a lot of stuff that could go wrong and you're about to see one of them right now the situation is i got so caught up with all the ceiling and then got distracted by my partner here a little bit and did not realize that I installed the assembly without the water pump gasket. Can you imagine that? All this work that I did, I put it on there. But I thank God that I remembered. See? So I had to now put the new gasket, <laughs> put the gasket back on there. Man, I was so salty. But I'm not too, too salty because I'm happy I caught it. Imagine if I had put it all the way back together. And then now this thing leaking, we have to take off back, fang shroud and all these things again. So, even though I'm a little bit, I wouldn't say upset, but perturbed, I am thankful that I caught it at this point right here. I put the gasket back on and then it's so nice, I got to do it twice. <laughs> Remember me telling you that, yo, sometime in this field, it's nice, you get to do it twice. I have done engines twice. I have done transmissions twice. And sometimes more than twice, you put it in and something happens. And you have to just take it back out. Same time. Just, <laughs> I'm telling you. So that's the situation with that. Um, so we caught the gasket. We are just doing the reassembly right now. Putting everything back together. From here, from here, it is just a... Um, uh, 
reassembly. There is nothing new happening here after this. It is just me catching all the bolts, lining up that hard pipe on the passenger side, tightening everything back up, putting the fan shroud on, putting the hoses back on, tightening up the fan, filling the fluids up and everything. And this is how it's done. So if you are going to remove or replace your water pump on your BMW M3 E46, this is kind of how you got to attempt it or approach it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bless you.